The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. Hi, this is Mia Mohsen Zia, also known as Mia No Time for Love. Check out my latest book, Missing, available in print and ebook format on Amazon. It's now time for the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, iTunes, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and the MikeWagnerShow.com. Mike brings you great guests and interesting people from all across the globe. So sit back, relax, and enjoy another great episode of the Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Looking at a professional website without breaking your budget? Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show, get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international warring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is illusion and those you love will be the first to go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia has garnered great reviews in Eve 11 and Joyce by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Forge Riley, and Manales. So grab your copy today for Goes Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com and over 30 podcast platforms, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also, Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, Apple Music, and coming soon to HamiltonRadio.net and other networks uh, coming. Stay tuned to the Mike Wagner Show for more details. Don't forget to take the Mike Wagner Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Wagner Show podcast. T-shirts, pop sockets, throw pillows, tote bags, hoodies, makes great gifts 24-7. Go to Amazon.com, check out the Mike Wagner Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia for great books like Missing, Once, and Wrinkles. Also, T-shirts, pop sockets, hoodies, phone cases, and more. Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia. Check it out today. Also, support the Mike Wagner Show on Anchor FM. PayPal, themikewagnershow.com. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com at the Mike Wagner Show. Make sure you do so today. We're here with a terrific lady who is a licensed marriage and family therapist and uh, international relationship expert and media spokesperson on narcissism and codependency. And she's um, author of a few books. We'll be talking about her latest in just a minute. She's counseled individual and couples for over 30 years and coaches uh, internationally. And she, her new book is a transformable transformable and relatable book that basically helps you understand and improve your uh, relationship and uh, also includes a step-by-step program of scripts to confront abuse and uh, set, make sure your needs are met and also discover signs of a narcissist and also identify, understand, and regain control as well. Her book is called Dating, Loving, and Leaving a Narcissist. We'll talk about that. Live, ladies and gentlemen, from the Plus Studios in beautiful Santa, Santa Monica, California, the amazing, multi-talented, licensed marriage and family therapist, Internet, international relationship expert and author of the book, Dating, Loving, and Leaving a Narcissist, Darlene Lancer. Darlene, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, thank you so much for asking me to be on your show. Uh, it's a pleasure. Well, it's great to have you on board as well, too. So you're a licensed marriage and family therapist and an international relationship expert and media spokesperson on narcissism and codependency. You counseled yeah. individuals and couples uh, over 30 years, and you also coach internationally. Your new book is a transformable and relatable book that uh, helps you understand and improve your relationship. And it's called Dating, Loving, and Leaving a Narcissist. We'll also talk about a couple of books as well, too. And before getting to all that, Darlene, tell us how I first got started. Tell, excuse tell, me, what? tell us how you first got started. Oh, how I got started. Okay. Well, I started off being an attorney, actually. <laughs> and I did that. I was an entertainment uh, an attorney for uh, like over 15 years. Before that, I did criminal law. Hmm. And um, I wasn't happy at it. And uh, eventually, I got back to what I was supposed to be doing, which was wanting to be a therapist. And 
I also wanted to be uh, an author, but that was kind of in the back of my mind. Mostly I wanted to be uh, a shrink starting when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And I got a little sidetracked. And then when I got back on track, I started uh, writing blogs. And eventually, uh, Wiley Publishing asked me to write Codependency for Dummies. Hmm. And that was came out in 2012. And then Hazelton Foundation, uh, which deals a lot with addiction, they read that book and they thought, we want you to write a book on shame. So I wrote that book that came out a few years later. And meanwhile, I wrote a lot of uh, my own books that I published on self-esteem, how to be assertive, how to overcome guilt, how to overcome perfectionism. All my books are work can use them to improve themselves. And, uh, and I had so much interest in narcissism uh, for, in social media and the clients were coming to me uh, because of their codependency and they were in a relationship with a narcissist that I wrote a book dealing with a narcissist uh, seven years ago. And that was very popular. And there's a lot of new research since then. And I've learned more about it. And I wanted to expand that into a paperback. A lot of people ask for a paperback. So then I wrote this book um, just this past year. Uh, and I expanded it to not just being in a relationship, but dating someone and then how to leave the relationship. Uh, so it's a much broader uh, coverage of the topic and deeper in terms of research and uh, has a lot of exercises to improve yourself in the relationship. And that just is going to be released on Monday. Mm. How'd so, you first, how'd you first uh, precisely got interested in the subject of narcissism? Well, it was, first of all, I have a narcissist in my family. Oh. So that was uh, always an interest of mine. Uh, and then it, it started when people started coming to me and they were in relationships with narcissists because I hadn't written about it before. And so then there was so much interest from my followers in social media that I, I did more research and I wrote this book on it, uh, dealing with the narcissist. And um, a lot of the things that apply to being in a relationship with an addict, which I was familiar with, and this is common with codependency, really apply to any abusive relationship and with a narcissist too. So, and, and most of the people in relationships with a narcissist are codependent. So it overlaps, it dovetail, dovetails. And I and now I have expertise in both. And so um, I, I look at it from both sides. Mm -hmm. And what are the signs of a narcissist? Okay. Well, a lot of people throw that word around and they say, oh, that person's so narcissistic or they're so selfish, or they're taking pictures of themselves, or they want to be the center of attention, and they're so narcissistic. Well, it's there's more involved to having NPD, narcissistic personality disorder, mm. than those traits. So you can have narcissistic traits. You can have a lot of them, but be what's called subclinical. So you don't not officially have the disorder. But to be uh, diagnosed with NPD, you have to have a lack of empathy. So you don't have empathy for other people's feelings. And um, narcissists project a lot. So they don't really see you as separate from themselves. Um, they don't realize that you are a person with individual feelings and needs that are unlike themselves. So, and they're very um, in it for themselves. They're selfish. They're, um, they think about relationships in terms of transactions. So they want to get the most and invest the least, like what kind of the best deal I can get. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're usually, um, you know, and they're also think that they're better than other people. So that's the arrogance, but underneath is a lot of shame, but you wouldn't see that. They think their self-esteem is very high because they think highly of themselves, but they need constant reinforcement that they're okay and that they're liked and they're admired and that they're great. They have a lot of a sense of grandiosity and they like to be in the best restaurant wearing the best clothes. They'll brag that they went to the best school and they drive the 
you know, the most um, desirable car. So they want to associate with uh, high status people, high status institutions, and it's all to compensate for not feeling enough inside. And I also wrote a book about shame, which I mentioned. So shame underlies both codependency and narcissism. And that's what they share in common is this sense of shame underneath, but the behavior is different. So a codependent, well, they may not be conscious of the shame, but they'll feel like they're just not good enough. And they'll feel um, like they have to compensate. They blame themselves a lot. They're victims of abuse because they take it in as like true about themselves, can't stand up for themselves. And a narcissist is kind of the mirror opposite. So they think they're better than everybody else. They may also, you asked about the traits, have a sense of entitlement. So they feel like they're special. They shouldn't have to wait in line. They should get special treatment, et cetera. Uh, so, but they brag about how great they are. And they won't take responsibility for anything. Now, the codependent takes response, too much responsibility, like it's all my fault. And the narcissism, the, excuse me, the narcissist will blame them. So it kind of fits as the narcissist blames, <clears throat> the codependent accepts the blame. Um, but underneath, there's both shame. So it's like a seesaw, you know, one's a high and one's low, but you could flip it and then that's what my book is really about. It's like how to empower people around the narcissist <clears throat> and how to raise your self-esteem and level the playing field. And if you get really confident, you'll start to see that the narcissist starts to get very insecure and very needy and the whole relationship changes. Mm -hmm. And is it possible to uh, change a narcissist as well too? And if so, how, how long would it take? Does it depend upon a person? Can it, how quickly it can be cured? Is it just takes time? Well, or? well, let me point out that, first of all, it exists on a continuum. So there's mild narcissism, and then you have extreme cases where they call it malignant narcissism, where they uh, act maliciously, fuller, they may break laws, very immoral um, activity or illegal activity. The more they tend to look like uh, sociopathic qualities, mm. uh, the more malignant, and also the more aggressive a person is, the more severe the narcissism. So mm. like sometimes they'll be physically violent, but not all narcissists are violent. So it's, it's not across the board. Mm. Um, in terms of change, uh, usually it takes years of therapy. Most narcissists don't want to go to therapy because as I said, they don't want any responsibility because of their shame. They start, they go to therapy and they start looking at themselves and they run. They don't want to see anything, any weaknesses or any flaws in themselves. They want to be perfect. And that's all to defend that sense of perf perfectionism about themselves defends, defends them against deep shame. But you can start to change their behavior in the way you interact with them. When they see that it's in their best interest to, not just because you they hurt your feelings, but because it's going to improve the whole relationship and it'll be better for them. So you have to learn to um, communicate with them in an educative uh, way. And I explain all this in my book. <clears throat> I even have scripts and strategies and a step-by-step -step plan. So you can't um, confront them in the way that, you would someone else because they're very thin skinned because of their shame. And so they'll react and then they'll just be more aggressive. So you have to um, hand them, uh, handle them with kids gloves and know exactly how to talk to them, but they can just like you, you may know if you know any narcissists or observe them, they can act um, very charming and appropriate in certain situations. And then maybe they get home and they um, will be abusive at home and be charming in public. That's not unusual. Mm -hmm. And some people say, well, everybody loves my husband or they love my wife. They don't understand like why I'm unhappy because it's all hidden. But the point being when the stakes, when it serves them to be appropriate and be nice and look good, 
they can, if they want to impress somebody, they will. So you have to be able to show that it's in their best interest to be that way at home too. Mm. So. That's a really interesting subject. You also mentioned about, um, you know, so, sociopath and everything else, psychopath and everything. That seems to be a trait, of course, a lot of the um, criminal masterminds, but I think you pretty much uh, saw the right there. And um, among the so- sociopaths or psychopaths out there, what percentage would you say have like a, a narcissistic personality? What would you say? Okay. Well, those are different diagnoses. Okay. So uh, I think very small, maybe, first of all, Nar- although there's a lot of talk about narcissists and also you see them in the public eye. Okay. Uh, so you might think that there are a lot and there's more in the entertainment business probably and politics than there are in the general population because they mm-hmm. like the attention, but it's, it's probably under 5% of the whole population. And mm-hmm. of those it's maybe 1% malignant type that are really malicious and dangerous so sometimes there's an overlap and they have both sociopathic qualities like aggression, conduct disorder that started in childhood, breaking the law, things like that, violence. And um, they may have that and be a narcissist, but that's really distinct. And one of the um, differences between, and I'm kind of um, talking about sociopathic Psychopathic and psychopathic, they're actually different. Uh, they say a sociopath is made, uh, meaning it's environmental, and a psychopath is born, meaning it's more genetic. And by the way, research is showing that about half of um, the cause of narcissism may be genetic too. So it does run into Wow. Family. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the difference is what I was going to say is that um, sociopaths. Um, they don't care so much how they look. Mm -hmm. So they have a goal and they'll even act, demean themselves if it's going to serve. But a narcissist won't do that. A narcissist is more impulsive. Somebody who's going to plot and plot, you know, and scheme how they're going to commit a crime. That's more a a criminal mind more than a narcissist. A narcissist wants validation. They want attention. They're going to say how great they are and try to impress you. And they can be manipulated that way. Mm, Yes. So um, somebody who is wants to look good, you know how to manipulate them. But a a psychopath, you can't manipulate them as much because they're very single minded as to what what they want and what they're going to do. And and I'm glad you brought that point up as well, too, and clearing up about uh, narcissism along those lines. And we'll talk about your book, Dating, Loving, and Leaving Narcissists, and um, also step-by-step program as well, too, and uh, some of the things you recognize, discover, and everything. But first, listen to The Mike Wagner Show at themikewagnershow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit Mm -hmm. online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition. Way. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Wagner Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout-out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international warring author Mia molson If you love fast-paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia molson Available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast-paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. Takes place in four countries, two strangers, one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love will be the first go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia has garnered great reviews in Eve Levin and George by Howard Celebrities, including Joanna Cassie, Forge Riley, and Manalis. So grab your copy today for Goes Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, check out the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com on over 30 podcast platforms and coming soon to Hamilton Radio and more. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And for great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. And for more great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia for great books, merchandise, and more. Amazon.com slash Mia Molson Zia. Check it out today. Also support the Mike Widener Show on Anchor FM, PayPal, the Mike Widener Show.com. You can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com at the Mike Widener Show. You can also do that today. We're here with licensed marriage and family therapist and international relationship expert and 
and also the author of the book, Dating, Loving, and Leaving a Narcissist, here on the Mike Widener Show, Darlene Lancer. And um, we, we covered, um, you covered as well, Conquering Shame and Codependency, The Eight Steps to Freeing the True You, and um, Codependency for Dummies. I think that's all covered as well, too. Once again, uh, explain the eight steps to uh, freeing the true you when it comes to your uh, book, Conquering Shame and uh, Codependency. Okay. <laughs> well, first of all, one of the biggest obstacles to self-esteem is our inner critic. So I always tell people, and I wrote a book about overcoming self-criticism, uh, is to write down your negative self-talk. And that includes the shoulds. You know, what you think you should should have done or should do in the future. Like, are you shitting on yourself all the time? <laughs> what a could have should have, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you call yourself names, you know, that was so dumb or... I'm lazy. What's wrong with me? Why did I do that? That's all self-shaming. Mm. Okay? And, uh, you know, the other things is like overcoming guilt. Are you carrying around guilt from your past? And mm. uh, finding out, I have a book right here. <laughs> oh, yes, that's right. Yeah. So um, <laughs> it's been a while since I read the steps myself. So, let me look at them. <laughs> so I want you to, um, okay, so the first thing is actually getting to know yourself, finding your, it's about finding your true self, um, to write about your feelings, journal every day. I say also like, uh, write down conversations you've had and see whether you were authentic or not. Mm -hmm. Did you go along with something that you disagreed with? Did you want to get off the phone and you didn't? Did you? Um, you know, disagree or want to set a boundary and you didn't write about it and then ask yourself why, because authenticity is the opposite of shame. Mm -hmm. So becoming more authentic and you have to know yourself, uh, obviously, to be able to reveal yourself. So a lot of people aren't aware of what they're feeling and then, or they can't name them. They say, I'm upset. Well, that doesn't tell me whether they're angry or they're sad or they're feeling ashamed or guilty. So getting to know, know yourself. Um, and then, uh, let's see, and getting to know your shame. What do you feel ashamed about? Is it your looks, your intelligence, uh, your earning capacity? That's different between men and women. And where does it come from? I have a whole chapter on exploring your childhood. So it usually comes from your childhood. Could be bullying also in, or in school or from a sibling. Okay, we're having some technical difficulties uh, here on the, um, the Zoom here on the Mike Wagner Show with uh, Darlene Lancer, author book. Okay, it looks like we're uh, back in uh, progress as well, too, with uh, Darlene Lancer. We had a little bit of a technical difficulty, but um, I think you mentioned one of the steps, and I think we talked about uh, looks and everything else before we somehow sure. got uh, sidetracked. So let's sure. see. I'm trying to think where we uh, left off at. I think we're okay, like... Where... I was about to give an example of... Yes, that's of right. Challenging mm -hmm. at least. Okay. So, for instance, um, maybe you had a parent that was uh, very weight conscious, Mm. And so they were always, maybe they were always on a diet or maybe, um, well, for instance, in my own, in my own family, um, my uh, grandmother was obese, but my mother was always on a diet. So um, I started watching my weight as a, as an early, uh, as a child, she never commented on, it, but I picked it up like observing, observing her being on a diet, even though my mother really wasn't overweight. But I've had clients who have parents that are constantly commenting on their appearance. Oh my! So to understand that that's your parents' issue, it's not yours. Mm -hmm. There could be even I've had couples where, um, let's say the husband, the husband, the male is um, very obsessed about his appearance, and so he's nagging his wife all the time, and her weight is normal, but she's not thin enough because it's his issue. So understand where these messages come from, the values come from. For instance, if you have a narcissistic parent, they'll typically say that you're self-centered, but it's a projection about them. They're the ones that are self-centered. Mm. Um, so shame gets carried down from generations too. So there might be 
criminality or adultery or addiction or something, a mental illness in the family. And the family tries to cover that up. And so you carry around this shame that our fa- there's something wrong with me or uh, you're of a lower class than your classmates, not enough money. But that's not a reflection of who you are. So um, our parents compare you, compare you to other siblings, compare you to the neighbors, compare you to themselves. When I was your age, you know. Oh, I have heard that adage before. And you got to sit there and listen for like, 20 minutes, one hour, and they lecture on that. We've all been there, done that. So Okay, so that's shaming, you know, when you start comparing. Do you compare? That's also how you criticize yourself. Do you compare yourself to your friends or, or your ideal of where you should be? That's another thing. People have a, these ideal images of themselves, and they're constantly comparing themselves to how they think they should be. So that's shaming of yourself, too. So getting to the root of the shame, and I have a lot of exercises and ways to do that, and then you kind of figure out where these beliefs and standards come from that you're carrying around. Maybe it's from your grandparents or something, that, and you don't even agree with. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and then you have to um, start to build your self-esteem and doing esteemable acts, being authentic, being honest, Um, maybe learning, developing new skills. And again, how you talk to yourself is important. And um, forgiving yourself for things in the past. And then it's important to share your shame. Because uh, there's a saying, you know, when you share your joy, it's doubled. And when you share your grief, it's halved. Mm. Well, when you share your shame, you're being authentic. And then it, it reduces it. So The thing about shame is you think the worst part of it, unlike guilt, is that I'm uniquely defective. So it's a feeling of alienation from the human race. There's something wrong with me that other people can see or that I'm uniquely um, defective. So when you share it with someone, they say, oh, yeah, I thought that or I felt that or, yeah, I can understand that. It just can evaporate, you know, years of feeling shame. That's one of the one thing that's great about um, group process and 12 step groups where you can share vulnerable feelings and you can feel better about it. Also sharing with a therapist that can say, well, there's no reason for you to feel shame about that. And here's why. And so sharing your secrets, you know, that is healing. So that's a thing. And then you have to learn to love yourself and accept yourself. Because none of us are perfect. So even with with flaws that we have, being able to say, yeah, I do that. Sometimes I do this and sometimes I do. Sometimes I'm selfish and sometimes I can be angry or hurt someone's feelings and it's not a disaster. You know, sometimes I feel lazy. Sometimes I'm uh, forgetful. Mm -hmm. And accept yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's really interesting too, like with uh, some of the eight steps, we encourage everybody to check out the book, Conquering Shame and Codependency, Eight Steps to uh, Freeing the True You, and uh, let's talk about your book, uh, Dating, Loving, and Leaving a Narcissist, Um, you know, and of course, you know, how you how you discover diagnosis, type and deep motivations, recognize the warnings and everything, and uh, maybe just some of the pointers, um, you know, what to look up for, what to recognize, and um, also has a step-by-step program, more about the book. Okay, so so first you have to understand who you're dealing with. Mm -hmm. So you really have to understand the way a narcissist thinks because a narcissist will prioritize power because that's the most important defense and to not feel ashamed. They want to be on top and have power and they will sacrifice the relationship to get it. Their partners usually have the opposite agenda. They will prioritize the relationship and sacrifice themselves to keep it. So you have different motivations. And as I said, a narcissist can't empathize. A lot of people think, well, they, he should know what I'm feeling. He should, you know, be able to understand that that hurts me or, but no, they don't, they don't, you, you can't expect them to read your mind or her. And the narcissists uh, are typically disagreeable in their personality. That's a personality trait. Some traits are inherited. And they 
they don't mind mixing things up and if they can get what they want. Um, and they may want to put you on the defensive in order to have power over you. So you have to do the opposite. Your inclination may be to, to um, not make waves and go along to get along. But a narcissist is interested in getting ahead. They don't care about getting along. They don't mind the conflict. <laughs> so their partners hate conflict and narcissists love conflict because then they can have a chance to be on top. They always are looking to be one up on someone else. So you have to kind of understand them and where they're coming from. That's the first thing. And then one of the next things you have to do is detach. Because when you react to them, you give away your power. So typically doing what comes naturally is to go appease someone, try to you know, pacify them, keep the peace, or explain yourself or defend yourself. When you defend yourself, what are you doing? You're telling the other person they have a right to judge you. No, I didn't mean that. I meant this. No, this is your, your understanding, my intention. You go all through all this explanation. You're giving them the right to judge you. So you're putting your self-esteem in someone else's hand and making excuses for yourself. You don't, they're not really interested in your explanation. Actually, to a narcissist, often the facts get in the way. They don't mm. care about the facts. They just want to win the argument. Hmm. That's really interesting. I think you pretty much hit a point. And of course, you know, many of us had, um, you, you know, encountered it and go by the route and everything. And of course, you know, what are some of the ways to, to improve a relationship? And of course, um, you know, how, how, how would you, how would you leave one? So it's like, you know, you have a choice, you can improve or you can also leave. Okay. Well, it's a process. So a lot of people, first of all, most of the people that contact me, they want help to keep the relationship. A lot of times, if they're, if they're ready to leave, they would have already left. They wouldn't be reading the book, and they wouldn't they wouldn't be um, calling a therapist. Okay, mm -hmm. so one of the things is people don't realize outsiders don't realize an abusive relationship is harder to leave than a normal relationship because what happens is ooh, there's a, a, a term called trauma bonding. So when you're continually shamed and put down, you start to become you, you look for any like signs of kindness and you become more, um, maybe you get like crumbs of, of uh, kindness or affection and little gestures. And then you cling to that and it becomes addictive. It's called mm -hmm. intermittent reinforcement, like playing a slot machine. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh -huh. You don't win all the time. Once in a while you win, but so you keep playing or gambling, you keep playing. For that, the, those, you know, jackpot, till you get the jackpot. Mm -hmm. So people hope, in the beginning, the narcissist is very seductive and charming and can be loving and romantic. And so you're looking for the, to, to find that person that was very congenial and warm and, and the person that you fell in love with. And you're hoping that he or she will come back. And once in a while, I'll give you some hope. You know, but over the year, over years, it gets less and less. And then people, they've done tests like this with, with rats, actually. <laughs> they'll, keep, they'll keep pressing the lever for food, even when no food comes anymore. There's no reward. So it becomes an addictive process, just like gambling. And it gets hard to leave. And then the other thing is, sometimes they still love the narcissist. So I say, you know, love is no excuse for abuse. Mm. So, a lot of times the partner is very empathetic. That comes naturally to them. And they think, well, he didn't mean it or she had a bad childhood and they're very understanding and they keep hope the person, hoping the person will change. And they go, into the, they go into denial. They don't realize exactly that they're being abused because maybe then there's a good time or they get along for a weekend or something and then they get their hopes up until the next time. So that's part of the process, coming out of denial and realizing, gee, am I really with someone who has uh, a mental illness? That's kind of a shock. And maybe it's not going to turn out the way I've been hoping all these years. So, um, and not reacting. When you stop reacting, it takes away a lot of power. 
from the narcissist because they want that reinforcement when you react and you start stop doing everything at their beck and call and stop trying to meet all their demands, which are insatiable and you, you're never going to satisfy them anyway. And then you start setting boundaries. You start saying, that's not acceptable. You know, don't talk to me in that tone of voice. And here's what's going to happen. If, if you continue to do that, there's a price to be paid because they get away with it. So um, abuse that is allowed is abuse that's uh, endorsed. And if it's behavior that's endorsed, will be repeated. So that's what happens if you don't. And then your, your self-esteem gets lower and lower. And the more you accommodate uh, other people or a narcissist, the smaller your sense of self becomes. You become totally out of alignment with your soul. Um, now you become a shell of yourself. So in terms of freeing your true self, your true self gets lost. You lose yourself in the relationship. I know uh, when a lot of people say when they're in love with a narcissist, that they have to give up themselves to keep, they have to choose between themselves and the relationship. And especially for instance, if you start to get stronger or more powerful, they might, the narcissist might feel um, threatened. And so they might want you to um, give up a career or something or try to control you. So they're number one. So you have to choose, you know, between yourself and your partner. That's a horrible choice. A healthy relationship they want you to be your best. They want you to shine. They're proud of you. So some narcissists might be, and some might be threatened. It depends on the individual. So those are some of the steps. And then you have to learn, as we we're saying before, to build your own self-esteem and not make it dependent on someone else liking you or loving you or accepting you. Because whether it's the narcissist or your next relationship, uh, you'll be dependent on, that's not even self-esteem, it's others' esteem if it's dependent on what other people think. It has to come back to you. And it's unfamiliar to codependence because they're so other oriented. Their behavior and thinking revolves around other people. Similarly, similar to a narcissist. But so it has to come from within and start to accept yourself and love yourself. And this will make you stronger. And then you're more in a position, you asked me about leaving, so when you get to that point, the relationship will likely improve. And if it doesn't, you're stronger now because a lot of people, uh, their self-esteem is so damaged or they're afraid of the reaction or the repercussions from leaving the narcissist that um, just like they're afraid to set boundaries, well, leaving is a huge boundary. So you have to build up slowly, baby steps, I always say, mm -hmm. to set small boundaries and consequences to uh, and then to before you're ready to take the bigger step to actually leave the relationship um, and sometimes you know ideally you'll leave because you're so happy that you don't need that relationship anymore or the relationship will improve and that happens with clients too the relationship improves and uh, they're happy with the relationship so Hmm. That's rather interesting as well, too. And this came to mind as well, too. Does gaslighting uh, play part in a narcissism? That's been the big subject lately, gaslighting. That's right. It's very topical. And I have a blog on my website about gaslighting and section in the book on it, too. And so, um, as I said, <laughs> pretty much for many narcissists, they don't all gaslight, but and some people gaslight, and they're not narcissists. So <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's just one kind of behavior. Um, the facts get in the way, okay? So if they want to do what they want and they don't want to be criticized, they'll deny it or they'll maybe try to manipulate you to undermine you uh, with lies or, or saying you don't know, you're starting to lose your memory, say all kinds of things like that to make you doubt yourself. That's really what gaslighting is. It's not a simple, just simple denial, like, no, I never flirted with that person um, it's 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 a bigger scheme than that it's really to undermine your sense of your own mind and make you really doubt yourself 
Mm. That's what gaslighting is. And it can be very damaging. Mm hmm. Okay. Well, we're learning about that as well, too, about narcissism as well, too. And uh, where can we find all your books at uh, Dating, Loving, and Leaving a Narcissist and uh, more as well? I'm learning a lot about this as well, too. Okay. Well, it'll be for sale on Amazon and, and some other outlets starting on Monday, but you can pre-order it on my website, uh, whatiscodependency.com. Uh, if you forget that, you can just Google my name. I have a website, darlinelancer.com. And you can pre-order it there. Uh, if you just want the Kindle version, you can pre-order that now. But the paperback uh, won't ship until Monday. So uh, it's also in other on uh, Monday. You can also get it at uh, other for other devices. You can get it at Smashwords. But all the links to all of that is on my website, what is codependency.com. Okay, we will certainly do that. What's coming up for uh, author Darlene Lancer? We'll find out just one minute. You listen to the Mike Widener Show at the MikeWidenerShow.com, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at SonicWebStudios.com for all your needs. Also brought to you by our official sponsor, the Mike Widener Show, International Warring author Mia Molson Z of Missing, available on Amazon and paperback and ebook. We'll be back with author Darlene Lancer of Dating, Loving, and Leaving a Narcissist. After this time up. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention The Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host and I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written. It's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter and it's very well done. I'm going to highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia. He is the author of Missing. And I want to give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing, available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Hey, hey, this is Ray Powers, and boy, are you in luck. Right place, right time. Tuned in to the Mike Wagner Show. You heard me. We're back with author Darlene Lancer, also licensed marriage and family therapist, international, international relationship expert on the Mike Wagner show about the book, Dating, Loving, and Leaving a Narcissist. And um, also, what can we expect from you in 2022 and beyond, Darlene? Well, um, I think this book is going to carry me for a while. And I have a few more ideas that I'm going to be writing about um, as soon as I have some time. <laughs> I have a couple, about two or three books in my mind that I'm going to um, look into coming up and there'll be about um, self improvement and relationships, the subjects I've been writing about. So. Okay. We're certainly so, looking forward to as well too. And uh, who do you consider biggest influence in your career? Well, let's see. Um, in my career, I guess uh, I had a mentor called Hal Stone, a psychologist that I work with for a while and uh, he's no longer with us, mm -hmm. but he wrote a few books um, and uh, introduced a uh, form of therapy called voice dialogue. Okay. And I use that in my work too. And he was a inspiration to me. He was a Jungian analyst. So. Mm, very nice. That's very interesting. And what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? Oh, trust yourself. Trust yourself. And, and talking about narcissism and abusive relationships, if you suspect that you might be being abused, you probably are. Hmm. So that's, you know, people usually don't think that unless they have good reason to. Hmm. So it doesn't matter if someone says, oh, that wasn't. I mean, if your partner or whatever says, no, I'm not abusing you, you're crazy. If you feel like you're being abused, you probably are. And talk to get help. Especially if there's any violence, don't wait, you know, call a hotline, seek out therapy and okay. get 
a safe place to go to. That's a very good idea as well, too. Once again, author Darlene Lancer, licensed marriage and a family therapist, international relationship expert on the Mike Wagner show with the book, Dating, Loving and Leaving a Narcissist. A very big thank you for your time, Darlene. You've been absolutely fantastic. Learned a lot well, from you. you. No problem. You, Looking sir. forward to having you in soon. Keep us up to date. Keep in touch. We'd love to have you back. Once again, tell us about your upcoming projects. What's your website? How do Great. people contact you? Where can people purchase or check out your books? Okay, well, what is codependency.com? There's all links to amongst all social media. I have a YouTube channel and Twitter, Facebook on Clip It, and I have a media page on my website with all of my interviews. So um, just put my name in and do sign up for my monthly blog because I have over 200 blogs. Um, I also blog on Medium, but they're all on my website too. Okay, we will certainly do that. Once again, Darlene, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely fantastic. Looking well, forward to having you again soon. Very much, yeah. No problem. Yeah, just keep us up to date. Keep in touch. We'd love to have you back. We wish you all the best, and you've got a great future ahead of you. Thank you. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention The Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host. And I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written, it's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter, and it's very well done. I'm gonna highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia, he is the author of Missing. And I wanna give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamotionzea.com. Missing, available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to The Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and themikewagnershow.com. Please support our program with your donations at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again next time for another great episode of The Mike Wagner Show.